Let's get to the full coverage. A wall to wall today. We have Mike Fern all over the sales numbers in Tokyo. Lizzie in D.C. with a look at what happened in those hearings. And uh, Daron Levin joining us from the Motor City of Detroit. So let's kick it all off with Mike Fern. And I guess, Mike, uh, things are bad, but not as bad with U.S. sales are falling for a second month, but not as poorly as forecast. That's right. Sales were down 9% from a year earlier, which sounds bad, but the Edmunds.com forecast was a 10% drop, and January's fall was 16%, so we're off the worst, possibly. Honda, Nissan, and Hyundai reported gains, but they did miss the Edmunds forecast. Honda up 13%, Nissan 29% higher than a year earlier, South Korea's Hyundai 11% up. Toyota says that March is going to be its turnaround month. It's offering incentives to attract customers after an 8.5 million vehicle global recall tarnished its reputation for safety. It's giving 0% loans of as much as five years on models including the Camry, the Corolla, the Prius. Customers can lease cars for less than $200 a month. Toyota owners who buy a new Toyota get two years free maintenance. Toyota says that the sales will will bounce back now. Japan's trade minister says if they don't, it could hurt the nation's economy. I've heard Toyota is already suffering from a decline in sales. This in turn could weigh on Japan's growth. We will closely monitor the situation. Toyota's American depository receipts rose at 1.1 percent. Honda fell by about a third of 1 percent. Nissan closing eight tenths of 1 percent higher, Susan. All right, so those are the sales figures. Let's get to the attacks uh, in D.C. still. In fact, Toyota getting another scathing criticism uh, from one of its longtime allies on Capitol Hill during the Senate hearing as, uh, you know, the company is still facing uh, a lot of fire from about its massive recalls. Let's get to Lizzie O'Leary, who now joins us from D.C. And Lizzie, uh, who exactly is this that we're talking about? We're talking about Jay Rockefeller, who is the Senate chairman of the Commerce Committee. He's been a longtime ally, friend of the Toyota family, uh, also brought or helped bring a plant to his home state of West Virginia. And he was extremely frustrated, you can tell in his tone, with the executives testifying in the committee today. He also essentially served notice that we might see stricter regulation going forward. For example, they might want to see automatic overrides. Uh, listen to Senator Rockefeller talk about what could happen after this series of hearings. We need to look at current law and ask if it is strong enough to prevent something like this from happening again. Now, we also saw some memoranda come out of these hearings, some internal documents. I want to bring up one from 2006. Four years ago, Executive Jim Press warning his superiors in Japan about a slipping relationship with NHTSA. That was largely dependent on quality issues. Also, asking folks in corporate headquarters to trust the judgment of Toyota North America about what was happening with their safety concerns. And then third, asking for more information, more technical support as they start started to see more problems develop. Now, we also got memos from another executive here in D.C., Chris Tinto, a former NHTSA employee who then went to work for Toyota, said more quality issues were starting to show up as the automaker expanded. And this one is key, saying they had a less defensible product when they were trying to fight back against some of the criticisms from NHTSA from the Department of Transportation. Senator Rockefeller asking the three executives testifying to date for more information uh, sounding pretty frustrated that he didn't get it. And I think this is certainly not the last note that you'll see in these congressional investigations into Toyota, Susan. I bet, Lizzie. And also NHTSA coming under fire, as well as you mentioned. Okay, Lizzie O'Leary uh, talking to us from Capitol Hill in D.C. Let's uh, move on to talk about those, uh, again, uh, stunning results coming from Ford, beating GM in monthly U.S. sales for the first time in more than a decade. Ford sales jumped 40 Three percent in the month of February. Let's get more from our editor in chief for the Bloomberg editor at large, uh, Daron Levine, joins us from the Motor City of Detroit. And uh, Daron, just a few years ago, people thought uh, Ford was uh, pretty much dead in the water in terms of uh, its uh, competition amongst the big three. But here you go, a few years on, and it looks like a lot of their decisions have been brilliant for the company. Well, Alan Mulally has done a very good job for Ford Motor Company, and now the company really has its wind uh, in its sails and is doing uh, fairly well in a, in, a, in a weak market. It's gaining share against its rivals, and uh, while it did gain share against uh, GM and Toyota, obviously, uh, the, the, the real headline here is that the market is still a very bad market and very weak. Uh, Ford is glad to be 
be putting some sales gains ahead of its last February, which was, was, was even more awful. But the general picture is not, still not very good here in Detroit. Yeah, and Jerome, you know, someone would say that Ford uh, seems to be the uh, natural benefiter of what's happening at Toyota because they're not the big, uh, big car pusher. They don't produce as many gas guzzlers as General Motors. Well, one of the big uh, beneficiaries certainly is Ford to some extent. I would say an even bigger one is probably Hyundai because uh, shoppers here tend to cross shop Toyota, Honda, Nissan, and Hyundai. And Hyundai has some new models, uh, particularly at Sonata, which is actually gaining a lot of attention. And so uh, it, it's, doing, it's doing quite well. Another big uh, event today that uh, really sort of leaped out at everybody was the fact that uh, GM shook up its top management uh, yet one more time. Mark mm. Royce, who came, uh, came into town as the new president, has now replaced many of the top people at the car divisions in the sales and marketing jobs. And uh, it's going to be a while until that gets absorbed. Uh, you hear sort of rumblings at GM that there's uh, not much continuity and not very good morale there right now as people kind of get used to this new president and what he might want. I bet. Okay, so but there you have it for the February U.S. sales of Ford, topping GM for the first time since 1998. Darone, thank you for that. Darone Levine, our Bloomberg editor at large, joining us from Detroit.